Hi, I'm Brian Heidelberger, a partner with the law firm of Winston & Strawn in Chicago, and here today with another mini advertising law, well actually let's call this a public service announcement about testimonials and endorsements, and it seems like based on a recent FTC action, some people may be able to use a refresher course. Well, the FTC recently brought an action against a major agency who will remain nameless this time for not disclosing their connection when their employees tweeted about their advertiser's product. An assistant account executive emailed the agency and said, hey, everyone go out there and tweet this about our client's product. Well, unfortunately, the agency employees tweeted on their personal accounts and didn't disclose that they worked for the agency. The FTC brought an action now against the agency. So, you lawyers out there are probably thinking, Brian, we know all this. We've heard this all before. Well, you may have, but pass this on to your assistant A's. Pass this on to other people in your company because they probably aren't aware of it. So, what do they need to know? Well, the FTC guides concerning testimonials and endorsements say that when somebody is giving an opinion that is not that of the advertiser, such as a blogger or an employee or somebody entering a sweepstakes or a celebrity, and that statement is sponsored such that they got money, free stuff, contest entries, or just that they're an employee of the company or the agency, well, when you have those two things together, the FTC guides are going to apply. What do you have to do if they apply? Well, first, give these people training. Make sure they know about the products and services so they don't say anything misleading. Two, make sure they know that they have to give their honest opinion. Three, make sure they disclose the material connection between the company, and we'll talk more about that. Three, you're not done. You need to monitor those people to make sure that they're doing the appropriate thing. And four, if something is wrong, you have the obligation to try to take that material down. You might have heard about these cases in the past. The FTC investigated companies like Ann Taylor and Hyundai where they had bloggers coming to events and the FTC was concerned that people may not have then disclosed their relationship that they were getting free stuff. The FTC has brought other actions against agencies, such as PR agencies, where they have gone on Apple iTunes and posted reviews of clients' video games without disclosing that they worked for that company. They've also brought cases in the affiliate program situation, where companies had an affiliate program where people would tweet or write about their opinions of an, a, a company's product. They would then have a link back to the advertiser's product and those affiliates would get paid every time somebody made a purchase. But the affiliates weren't disclosing that payment relationship and the FTC brought an action and a $250,000 penalty. The FTC has also brought actions for satellite media tours where a home security company had the safety mom go on a satellite media tour and talk about the advertiser's product but fail to disclose that she was actually not just an independent reviewer but getting paid by that home security company and notably the PR company was investigated not just the home security company it's not just the FTC who's worried about it it's people like the New York Attorney General who brought in action a couple years ago for three hundred thousand dollars against a company who created fake testimonials the FTC has given us some clarity on how to make disclosure of this material connection. They want you to disclose it and they said it needs to be understandable so things like hashtag SPON for spawn probably won't work. People don't understand what that means. And also putting the disclosure after the link in a tweet also may not be enough to make people understand that there's an appropriate disclosure there. The FTC says that the disclosure shouldn't be at the end of a long post because people won't necessarily understand and read that long. The FTC said the disclosure shouldn't be in multiple tweets because in between in the stream you might miss the disclosure. The FTC has also said that vague terms like the name of a particular program aren't going to work. People won't understand that there is compensation being paid, that there is a connection between the advertiser and those posting about the contest. So instead of things like just the name of the promotion, you need to say things like hashtag contest entry or hashtag sweepstakes entry. So, as a reminder to those people who aren't familiar with these rules, make sure that you get information about the product 
that you give your honest opinion, that you disclose your connection between yourself and the advertiser, that the company monitor what you do, and if they see something wrong, they take it down. And you, if you're responsible in the company, make sure that you conduct some training or at least send an email to make sure all those young people in your company know what's going on. And if you see an email going around like that one by the assistant account executive in that FTC action, if you see something like that and it smells wrong to you, well, circle back and don't let that email just go and make sure the rest of the company is informed that disclosures need to be made. How do we make those disclosures? Things like hashtag sponsor, hashtag ad, hashtag company employee, hashtag agency, hashtag contest entry. But disclosure needs to be in close conjunction to the claims being made and it also needs to be clear and conspicuous. But to be very clear, it's not just when you're making claims about the product. The FTC really has broadly interpreted this. And it seems like any time you are making statements about the advertiser's product, even if it's not a product claim per se, you really need to make the appropriate disclosures. What's not okay, obviously not disclosing. Disclosing your affiliation in the bio of your social media page likely is not going to work using vague things like hashtag spawn, hashtag EE for employee, or hashtag generic name of promotion. And it's never okay to pose as a consumer. So, although no assistant AE is gonna understand what I'm referencing here, this is your company, this is your obligation to disclose. And this is what happens when you fail to disclose. For more mini law lessons, Go to youtube.com backslash adage or youtube.com backslash Brian Heidelberger. And you can always follow me on Twitter at Brian Heidelberger. And until next time, let's be careful out there.